Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Who sent Loverture, the black Napoleon who freed Haiti's slavery, finally revealed? Who sent Loverture? also known as the Black Napoleon, who freed Haiti's slaves, was a leader of the Haitian independence movement during the French Revolution. Born on May the 20th, 1743, Franco is too saint his early life is not well documented. It is believed that his father was Gano Gnu, the young son of the King of Alada, a West African kingdom. His family was sold into slavery and sent to the Caribbean. Docent was fortunate to be owned by the enlightened masters who allowed him to learn to read and write. He read the classics and the enlightenment political philosophers who deeply influenced him. He also developed a deep devotion to the teachings of Catholicism. Intelligent and hardworking, Toussaint became an expert in medicinal plants and horsemanship. Recognized by his master for his abilities, he quickly rose to become the plantation's chief steward. It is said that he was given his freedom in 1776, the same year the United States declared its independence from Great Britain. Toussaint continued to work for his former owner and married Suzanne Simon Baptiste in 1782. The couple had three children, Placid, Isaac, and Saint Jean. Franco is Toussaint Rovecha was a former Haitian slave who led the only successful slave revolt in modern history. Standing steadfastly, he fought to end slavery and gain Haiti's independence from European powers, France and Spain. Forming an army of former slaves and deserters from the French and Spanish armies, he trained his followers in guerrilla warfare and successfully ended slavery in Hispaniola by 1795. On the August of the 22nd, 1791, Slaves rebelled in the French colony of Saint Dominique on the western half of Hispaniola. Inspired by the French Revolution and angered by generations of abyss, slaves began slaughtering whites with impunity. At first, Franco Toussaint was uncommitted. He was nearly 50 years old and married with a family farming a small plot of land and running a plantation for his former master. But the rebellion began to expand and eventually it migrated to where Toussaint was living. His decision to join the liberation wasn't only driven by the desire to defend his way of life. Toussaint was also deeply influenced by the Catholic religion which condemned slavery and enlightenment philosophers John Locke and Jean Jacques Lusso, who wrote The Equality of Man. Toussaint first secured the safety of his wife and family in the Spanish-controlled eastern half of the island, away from the rebellion. He then saw to it that his former master's family was on a boat bound for the United States. Toussaint joined George's Bissot's rebel who had allied with the Spanish against France. During this time, slavery, Toussaint had learned African and cruel herbal medicine techniques. He now served as a doctor to the troops as well as a soldier. 
Tusen quickly developed a reputation and was given command of 600 black former slaves. His forces were well organized and steadily grew to 4,000 men. Jean Jacques Desolent, an escaped slave, John Toussaint and quickly became a close confidant and able lieutenant. It was during this time that Toussaint adopted the surname Louverture from the French word for opening or opening the way. While the Caribbean island boiled with rebellion, European powers were fighting to gain advantage. The British government was concerned that the slave revolt would spread to their neighboring colony of Jamaica. Seeking an opportunity to harass the French, the British sent troops to put down the slave revolt. Fearing the defeat, the French National Convention acted to preserve its colonial rule and secure the loyalty of the black population. In 1794, France granted freedom and citizenship to all blacks in the empire, but the British troops remained determined to wreak havoc on France's tonous hold on Saint Dominic. Following France's decision to emancipate the slaves, Toussaint reversed his alliance and joined forces with the French against Spain. His first mission was the attack on Spanish-controlled Santa Domingo on the eastern side of the island. He was now fighting his former black colleagues who were still loyal to Spain. Under his leadership, Toussaint's troops were able to capture Santa Domingo. The Treaty of Basel in July 1795 ended the hostilities between France and Spain and the Spanish pulled out of Hispaniola. Toussaint contained the remaining British troops, rendering the ineffective and soon they too withdrew from the island. By 1796, Toussaint was the leading political and military figure in the colonies, admired by the former slaves whom he had helped free. He was also well respected by the many French authorities who technically still controlled Saint Dominic. Having temporarily secured peace with the European powers, Toussaint turned to the domestic unrest still fastening on the island. Prior to 1791, the mulatto population who were not enslaved had owned slaves themselves. Many wanted them back. In 1799, Toussaint was able to defeat the mulatto army with the help of Dessaline. The contest lasted a year with claims of atrocities committed by Dessaline's army. Toussaint was now the de facto ruler of the entire island of Espanola. He introduced a constitution which reiterated the abolition of slavery and declared himself governor, governor general for life with nearly absolute powers. Hoping to bring some stability back to Hispaniola, he set out to reestablish agriculture and improve economic conditions. Toussaint established trade agreements with the British and the Americans who supplied his forces with arms and goods in exchange for sugar and the promise not invade not to invade Jamaica or the, uh, the American South. Defying French revolutionary rules, he allowed the plantation owners who had defrayed during the, the, the rebellion to return. He imposed military discipline on the workforce while at the same time established reforms that improved workers' conditions. In 1799, Napoleon Bonaparte gained control of France. Amidst the chaos of the French Revolutionary Government, he issued a new constitution that declared all French colonies would be ruled under special rules. Toussaint and others suspected this would mean the return, of the return to slavery. He was careful not to declare full independence and professed himself as a Frenchman to convince Napoleon of his loyalty. 
Napoleon confirmed Toussaint's position as colonial governor and promised not to reinstate slavery. Napoleon also forbade Toussaint from invading Santo Domingo, the eastern half of the island where he had French authorities trying to restore order after the Spanish de de departure. The temptation to have complete control over the entire island was too tempting for the two cent. In January 1801, his armies invaded Santa Domingo and took control with a little effort. He instituted the French law, abolished slavery, and set out to modernize the country. Angered by two cent boldness, in 1802, Napoleon sent his brother-in-law, General Charles Emmanuel Lecrach, with 20,000 French troops to, re to regain control. These men were held picked for their experience in the campaign in Europe and would be a formidable force against Toussaint. Though he didn't live to see it, Toussaint's actions set in motion a serious and a series of global events that changed the geography of the Western Hemisphere and spelled the beginning of the end for European colonial domination in Americans. Frustrated by a rebellion he couldn't control in Hispaniola, Napoleon Bonaparte decided not to expand his empire into North America and sold the Louisiana Territory to the United States in 1803. This paved the way for Western expansion throughout the 19th century. Toussaint's actions also inspired revolutions in several Latin American countries over the next 100 years and American abolitionists to fight for an end to slavery. Though Toussaint was able to put up strong resistance for several months, eventually his coalition fell apart. Most Europeans and mulattoes living on the island sided with the French. In time, even Toussaint's best generals, Henri Christophe and Dessalines, joined the Lake Lodge. By June 1802, the end was near. Under the pretense of disguising peace, French General Jean Baptiste Burnett sent a letter to Toussaint inviting him to his quarters. There, Toussaint was arrested and set to fort the jokes in the Jura Mountains of France. Under intense interrogation, he died of pneumonia and starvation on April 7, 1803. Soon after, Jean Jacques Dessalines switched sides against, again and commanded rebel forces against the French. In a series of victories, Dessalines the Sorain's coalition of blacks and mulattoes were successful in forcing the French to surrender and leave the island. In 1804, Dessalines proclaimed independence and declared himself emperor. Hispaniola became the first black independent republic in the world. And that is the story of an African who defeated Britain, France, and Spain. My name is Osi the Bone Child, and thank you so much for watching the African Diaspora News Channel and the African Diaspora News Insider. Hey, please come down in the comment section and let me know what you think. But until then, I'll be seeing you in another video.